the learners of the PG Diploma in Women's and Gender Studies. Um, you already have some information about this program because you have already registered for it and you would have received some information such as the uh, student handbook. However, in this program we would like to uh, introduce you to some of the basic concepts and issues that you will come across in this one year PG Diploma. Um, and uh, also tell you a little bit about what to expect in terms of objectives, career paths, the structure of the program, uh, counseling issues, um, internship, uh, research project, assignments, exams, etc. So essentially we will tell you, give you a brief picture of the entire program and uh, what you can expect to learn from it. Uh, before we begin, I would like to introduce the panelists on um, this program. Dr. Um, Nilima Srivastava, she is uh, one of the uh, program coordinators for our combined PG Diploma and proposed MA program in Women's and Gender Studies. Um, to my left, Dr. Himadri Roy, who is uh, also a reader and a faculty member in the School of Gender and Development Studies. He is also a program coordinator along with myself for the PG Diploma in Women's and Gender Studies, which we are offering now through distance education mode. I am um, Anu Aneja, and I am a professor in the same school. Uh, and along with my uh, colleagues, we are uh, very happy to uh, welcome you to this program, and we hope that you will enjoy uh, the path that you have uh, just uh, started. So uh, I will just give you a brief um, um, a brief discussion on the uh, core foundational issues that go into the thinking about this program. Um, this program uh, will introduce you to some um, uh, basic knowledge, basic core knowledge, and it will enhance your critical abilities in these areas. When you exit with this PG diploma, you can be assured that you will feel qualified that you have the ability to situate women's issues and gender issues in various contexts, not only academic context, but also beyond. Uh, by that we mean in your personal life and in the lives of those around you, um, connect with social issues, etc. So uh, briefly, I will tell you that uh, some of the objectives of the program, but of course we will talk about objectives much more specifically. You can expect that you will be able to read and understand about gender issues and women's issues in historical context. We will look at various theories uh, and we will look at the progression of what we have achieved in terms of gender equality and women's equality in the present day scenario in India and also internationally. In this program, we will be looking at not only the women's movement in India, but we will also compare the women's movement and uh, the movement of other genders and sexualities with international context. Uh, you will be able to create an awareness about the ideologies and the social factors which lead to marginalization of women, marginalization of gender issues, not only in India, but also again internationally. Uh, the program will help you to develop a sense of gender sensitization. Some of you may already feel that you have come to this program with a certain level of gender sensitization, which is probably what has drawn you to the program, but we will help you to sharpen those skills and we will help you to develop perspectives um, that, will, um, that will introduce you to various formulations of power and empowerment in the context of women and gender studies. The program will also expose you to cultural, literary, political, and socio-economic dimensions within vast gender frameworks. Eligibility for this PG diploma is same as that for any other master's program of the university. That is, any student or any learner who has obtained a bachelor's degree in any discipline is eligible to apply for this program. Let me also talk about the overarching objective of this program, which is to acquire students with academic disciplines of gender and women studies and also exposed to the ideologies and the social factors which lead to marginalization of 
uh, women and other sexualities in the society. It is an interdisciplinary uh, program with focus on uh, women and, uh, and uh, people of other sexualities. Now, after completing the program PG Diploma in Women's and Gender Studies, usually a learner might think that uh, what are the career opportunities if one pursues this program. In career opportunities, I would like to focus that there are lots of opportunities and paths that are opened for any learner who completes this program successfully, especially NGO sectors, the public sectors, counseling jobs, uh, even uh, media and journalism, it will be a boost for them and people who are already in law, legal issue, and deal with legal issues, besides being the higher studies, higher education, and the research activities. Also, the private sector's area also open up gradually these days for the uh, programs like this of um, PG Diploma of Women's and Gender Studies. The duration, as we mentioned earlier, is uh, one year with a maximum of three years. What does this mean? This means that you will be able to complete the program in a minimum time of one year, um, but you can take up to a maximum of three years to complete the program. The total number of credits in the program is 34, 32 plus 2, which implies that there are 32 credits for coursework. Uh, there are four courses in the program. Each course is worth eight credits, which makes a total of 32 credits. Two credits are left for your internship or your research project. Now, about the courses, I would like to say that as most of the regular universities have papers, IGNU has a mandate to discuss these papers, term these papers as courses. So there are already been talked about by Professor Anu Anesha that this uh, has eight credit uh, courses. The first course is MWG001, which is Theories uh, in Women's and Gender e Studies, where you will have we will deal about uh, women uh, theories, women movements, women liberations uh, from the feminist perspectives, uh, as well as the other genders and sexualities, their movements and theories. The second course, uh, MWG002, gender, which uh, the title is Gender and Power. It talks about uh, power relationships of uh, different genders in the society, from men to women to other sexualities in different uh, areas of societal existence, from work area to education to region to national to caste, region, uh, religion, everything. The third program is called MWG003, Constructing Genders Through Arts and Media. In this program, we will see that uh, there are several uh, forms of arts and media in this country and each of them can depict uh, gender, how they are depicted. This course will deal with that. And the last course uh, is about uh, MWG004, Gendered Bodies and Sexualities, where we'll talk about bodies as reproductive uh, and user usages of reproductive technologies, uh, sexualities, different form of bodies, how the bodies perform, how they are racialized, how, they are labor, uh, how labor uh, affects the bodies, everything on that perspective. This is the entire courses, entire paper talks about. Now you must be wondering, since this is a distance education program, in uh, what form you will um, receive um, academic support, that is since there are no classes, um, how do you, um, how do you uh, interact with the material and how do you acquire the knowledge that is presented to you. In a distance education program, we call this counseling. We replace the classroom with counseling. In this particular PG diploma, uh, we will be using several forms of counseling which are available to us. Uh, the most common form of counseling is counseling sessions which are held at study centers. Uh, in some regions we will have study centers. In other uh, regions you may find that a study center has not yet been activated. However, we are going to uh, provide you with various other methods of learner support such as uh, teleconferencing, radio counseling, e-groups and online discussion forums, and other audiovisual aids. 
so let's uh, look at what happens in each of these. In the counseling sessions, what can you expect? That is, uh, counseling sessions are meant to be held at study centers where you go perhaps uh, either on a weekend or um, in the evening after office hours and there you interact with the counselor um, and basically ask them questions or discuss with them some of the issues that you have read. And you will get course material um, such as this one in this program. You will find that the material in this um, course is written in such a way that it is actually self-sufficient. You will be able to learn most of these, uh, acquire the skills and learn the information uh, in most of the courses all by yourself. It is written in a very uh, simple and direct manner and we have included enough activities and questions, etc. and other aids within the material. However, these forms of counseling are meant to help you further. Uh, teleconferencing means we will be holding EDUSAT sessions from here. That is, uh, these sessions will be available to you to attend at your regional center. You can come to the regional center. We will have discussions on specific topics. For instance, I'll give you an example such as feminism and disability. We may bring in an expert or somebody who has written part of the material and we will present the information to you and you will actually be able to uh, interact and ask questions uh, to the presenters. In radio counseling, similarly, we will hold sessions on the radio and all of these schedules will be available to you beforehand so you will know when to tune in. Um, again, we will have talks and discussions on specific topics related to your course material and you will be able to call in um, and ask your questions. We will also uh, have e-groups and online discussion forums. Uh, we will be creating e-groups on the internet so those of you who have access to computers can uh, send in your queries, discuss issues with your peers, uh, send in your opinions to each other or to us, exchange ideas with uh, all the faculty members here so you will not feel isolated at all. We will try to keep you connected with us and with the um, material through uh, all of these counseling methods and through other um, audiovisual aids. Now let us look at the internship or research project component in this program. Uh, besides the 32 credits of coursework, as we mentioned earlier, there is an option. The option is between a 30-day uh, internship or a research uh, project. You are free to choose either one or the other. We will look more closely at these now, starting with the research project. Now, a research project is basically like taking a topic on which you are interested in. Now, choosing this topic entirely lies on you. But to get the topic approval, you have to fill up a form which will be available in, in the Annex 3 of your program guide. Now, if you look into the form closely, you will see that it has to be approved by the program coordinators, that is, uh, we faculties and uh, over here in the headquarters. Now, this, after getting the approval, you can start doing your research according to the timings given to it. The research topic submission for the approval is 31st December. A learner must not forget the last date. This last date is very important. Once the uh, topic is confirmed and finalized. You will be sent an email or a um, confirmation through um, directly to you so that you, there will be no problem and you can start your work. Within 90 days of uh, that, you have to submit your entire research project to us directly or to the study centers if it is nearby. So, uh, when you submit that, there will be another form which will say that the, uh, there, it's basically a declaration form which shows that uh, this is entirely your area, you are working for the first time in this area and this has to be come along with the project that you would be submitting to the study centers or uh, to the uh, regional centers or directly to the uh, school itself. Now, over here, the research um, project, let me tell you, has to be submitted by 31st March. To tell you about the internship component of this program, uh, first of all, let me uh, specify the steps which you have to undertake to uh, take up this uh, component of uh, PG Diploma. You have to look for an organization which is 
catered to the area of uh, of interest where you would like to work so you will have to identify uh, either an ngo or any other institution where you would like to place yourself for 30 days of internship thereafter you have to take a approval by uh, looking at the student handbook page number 49 which will give you a performa to be filled in before taking up internship this is approval by the faculty to take up internship later this has to be filled in by you as well as the organization where you will be working the person with whom you will be working will also be uh, uh, will also be uh, writing the comments whether the organization is ready to receive an intern thereafter you will have to complete your internship for 30 days in continuation and after completion of this 30 days of work there is again to be a declaration or a certificate to be sent to the uh, uh, department uh, to the school of gender and development studies filled in by your uh, by the person who will be guiding or supervising you throughout the course of your internship and this will be also telling us about the areas in which you have worked and what has been your learning and what has been the experience of the organization which was working with you the approval has to be sought by 31st of december and internship has to be completed by 31st of march thereafter the school will conduct a viva voce for each learner the viva voce will also be conducted at the end of the research project and i would like to remind you to choose a topic if you are opting for the research project choose a topic of your interest but it should be connected to the course material in some way that is related to some of the issues that you have read and choose a very specific question that you will be looking at and the viva for both the research project and uh, or the internship will be conducted by the faculty through e conferencing means as told to you by professor anu anija evaluation will take place to various ways and means the by way of term and examination and assignments activities in built in slms and also unit and questions it will also be in the form of research project or dissertation and report by the supervisor who will be who will be guiding the intern but this will be in different time span one will be the continuous the continuous assessment which uh, which uh, comprises of 30% of the uh, evaluation value where it will be in the form of assignments and also self evaluation which is inbuilt in slm then there is term and examination which is worth 70% of the uh, of the marks which will be in the form of subjective examination to be held at the end of each semester let's talk about the assignments and exams more specifically um this is advice to you to help you uh, to do as uh, best as you can in this program and in each individual course when you receive the assignments please do complete them and send them in time back to us sending uh, delayed assignments will affect how quickly they can be graded and how quickly you will receive uh, the grades and therefore how uh, fast you can actually complete the program so do try to complete this in time when you um, uh, when you write your answers for assignments organize your ideas first don't just start writing take a rough piece of paper jot down some of the uh, points that you are thinking of refer back to the course material try to make it rich in content well organized and well written assimilate the content well don't just copy from the course material and just repeat it uh, we are encouraging you especially in this area of women's and gender studies to start thinking critically on your own so the material you read and you will find that the assignments that we will be sending you uh, will often Uh, times encourage you to make connections between the material and your uh, personal life experiences uh, perhaps a film that you have seen a book that you may have read 
So build those connections, think critically, analyze, use the material well, and uh, more than anything else, write clearly so that we can understand what you are trying to communicate to us. Now, uh, finally, uh, let's look at the connection or the link between the PG Diploma Program and the MA Program. Right now, you will be registered for the PG Diploma, but we want to tell you a little bit about the modular structure of this proposed MA Program, the um, coursework of the PG Diploma that you will be currently taking is going to be identical with the first year curriculum of the proposed MAWGS program, uh, which will be soon launched. There is going to be an exit point at the end of the first year. That is, if you register for the MA, then you would be able to exit with a PG diploma if you wish. That is, after completing the first year. And the MA program will have optional specializations in the uh, second year. Now about credit transfer, what would I like to say that uh, it's where after completing your PG diploma, you might take uh, some time to think that whether you want to pursue your MA or not, but this time span should not be more than three years. Keep that in mind as soon as the MA is launched. There should be a gap of three years, not less, than, not more than that. Now what happens in this uh, credit transfer is the credit you have acquired, that is 34 credits if you have acquired some amount, this credit can be directly banked upon and you can be taken admission directly to the second year of MA when it is launched, whensoever it will be launched and there are three specializations which the you'll come to know about it and out of these anyone you register the credits will, credits will be transferred directly to the second year. Four courses worth 32 credits plus two, two credits of project work or internship. After that you can make an exit or continue with the degree program which offers three options. One is stream A which will be gender, literature and culture or stream B which is women's studies and the third stream is gender and science. So any student who has completed PG diploma can choose either of the three disciplines. This is our proposed MA program and will be soon launched for uh, you to take up through open distance learning. I'm sure this uh, brief uh, program and introduction to PG Diploma in Women's and Gender Studies has answered a lot of the queries that you may have already in your mind. However, we are sure that as you are uh, reading the material and thinking about these issues, you may have other questions and you may like to interact with us. Uh, you can always contact us for the PG Diploma in Women's and Gender Studies. Uh, you can contact either me. Professor Anuaneja or Dr. Himadri Roy. Um, the emails are anuaneja at ignu.ac.in um, and for Dr. Nilima Srivastava, nilima srivastava at ignu.ac.in for doc, uh, Dr. Himadri Roy, it is himadri roy at ignu.ac.in. If you have queries specifically about the MA program, you could contact either myself or Dr. Nilima Srivastava. If you have specific questions about the PG Diploma, then you can contact again myself or Dr. Himadri Roy at any of these email addresses. Our other contact information is also going to be available in some of the uh, other materials such as the IGNU website. Uh, finally, we hope that you will make the most of this program and you will enjoy what you read. You will be able to think critically, analyze further uh, some of the very crucial and burning issues of women's studies and uh, gender studies in contemporary India and worldwide. Thank you. Thanks a lot.